Oi lads, it's Danny here today bring you a lovely video on why the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x divided by x. Why is that equal to 1? Let me prove it to you lot. But before we begin, first things first, please leave a like and subscribe and let's get right into it. Right, so the first thing you lot are going to have to do is we're going to, we want to apply the ultimate goal over here is we want to apply the squeeze theorem. But to do so, we need three terms. And to get these three terms of the squeeze theorem, right, to put together, we're going to have to use, a tr we're going to have to create three triangles and solve for the area of those three triangles. And I'll show you now how to find these triangles and how to create them and how to find the area. We're going to do them one by one and then we're going to apply the squeeze theorem and you'll see why this limit is equal to one. Let's get right into it then. So first, we're gonna create our first triangle. So how to create your first triangle, what you are gonna have to do is you're gonna draw a line, so draw a unit circle, very important. You're gonna draw a line which stretches from the origin to the unit circle. And from there, you're gonna fold the, the unit circle all the way down to the x-axis, and then you're gonna go right back to the origin very important and that's our that's basically going to be our first triangle well it's not a really a triangle it's a portion of a of a circle but i'm going to say it's a triangle right so it's like a slice of pizza think of it as a slice of pizza right so this here we know that this angle over here has got to be x basically right and then from here we know this is going to be the radius it's going to be equal to one and the whole unit circle is going to be equal to two pi so now the goal is to find the area of this slice of pizza. And to do so, we're going to use a is equal to pi r squared. The base is, uh, the radius is equal to 1. It's very straightforward. And notice we want a portion of this, of this big pizza. We want a slice of it. So therefore, we're going to do x divided by 2 pi. 2 pi is basically the unit circle, right? And x is the angle, basically, right? So what you are going to have to do is you're going to simplify this, the pi's cancel out, and you're going to, you are going to obtain an area of x divided by 2. Very plain and simple. From this point on, you are, have created your first triangle. Now it's, we're going to have to move in and create another triangle. The next triangle, basically, is going to take on a, a different look, basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a tangent line over here. So it's going to resemble something like this. And what you're going to do from the origin is going to connect the line to this tangent line. So once you do that, you're then going to drop a line straight back to the x-axis and then back to the origin. And there's a second triangle. We're going to find the area of this second triangle. Very, very important. Right, so this here angle over here is going to be x, basically. The radius is, well, the base of the triangle is going to be equal to 1, right? So now we're going to find the area of, of the red triangle. Very straightforward. You're going to use the area triangle uh, of area of the triangle formula, right? The base is equal to 1. Notice we don't know what the H is. So I'm going to show you how to solve for H. You're going to use Sokotoa. So more specifically, we know that tan of X is equal to opposite of adjacent. So your opposite side, let's call it H, right? And we're trying to solve for H. So if we basically replace the values into this formula, what you are going to obtain is that tan of x is equal to h. So we can substitute this tan of x is equal to h into the area formula, obtaining an area of tan x divided by 2. Right, so this here is going to be our bigger triangle, but you'll see in a moment how we figure that out. But let's get, let's continue, let's proceed. So this is the last triangle you got, you're all going to have to make. So this is the smallest triangle, and you'll see why in a moment. So the green triangle is kind of like the middle triangle, and the red one is kind of like the, the big triangle. So now we're going to create the smaller triangle, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So you're go we're going to call it the blue triangle. So we're going to draw a line hitting the unit circle, and then a line from the unit circle to the x-axis, basically. It's going to resemble something like this. And then we're going to close that line and send it back to the origin. Very, very important. Notice we've got our three triangles on one screen. We've got a blue triangle, which is the smallest triangle. We've got a green triangle, which is our intermediate triangle. And then we've got a red triangle, which is the largest triangle of them all. Right. So now we're going to find the area of the blue triangle. Very straightforward. You're going to put your angle X, basically, right? The so radius is equal to 1. The base is equal to 1. And the hypotenuse here is going to be equal to 1 as well. 
the height is h right and we're going to find the area of the blue triangle same formula as before very straightforward we're going to use Sokotoa once again but we're going to use sine of x is equal to opposite over over a hypotenuse the opposite is basically going to be h right we're going to take the triangle over here and it's going to be h divided by one one is the hypotenuse therefore we know that sine of x is equal to h we can easily solve for the area and what you are going to be obtaining is an area of equal to sine x divided by 2. So we created our three triangles. So you might be wondering why we had to create these three triangles. Let me prove it to you. Right. So we, this is here is a smallest triangle. And we're going to, we're basically applying a squeeze theorem to the areas of all these three triangles, right? So this here is our intermediate triangle, which is the green triangle. And this is here is our large triangle, which is the red one basically right so we're going to take the areas and do and apply the squeeze theorem and the reason why we had to use these triangles because the reason why is we can somehow manipulate this inequality to have it looking as sine of x divided by x and i'll show you how we do that and this is the reason why we have to use these triangles to solve for this right so we're going to multiply two on every side of this inequality we're going to have something that resembles this so the goal over here is you see this middle term right here we want to have it so it's sine x divided by x and you're going to play around with it and we're going to get it to resemble that basically right so once you do that you're going to divide by sine x on on every side the reason why is you're going to see in a moment but notice on the left hand side that's just going to be equal to one and on the right hand side we can replace tan of x equal sine of x divided by cos of x uh, when you, you are going to see right away that signs are going to cancel out so really what you're going to be left with is an inequality that resembles this now the goal here as i mentioned previously we wanted sine of x divided by x the only way we can do that is if we take a reciprocal basically we move the numerator in the denominator and the denominator in the numerator and if we do that on every side of this inequality you know we're gonna basically have it as the way we want it but there's something that's very important when you take the reciprocal of an inequality the inequality sign switches basically it changes it flips so it's very important that you do this flip mark it on your note sheet somewhere very important right so now we have it in the way we want it we got sign of x in the numerator and x in the denominator now from this point on we apply the limit and then we're going to prove it with the squeeze theorem right away. So apply the limit, which you are going to notice on the left hand side, that's equal to 1. On the right hand side of this inequality, I mean over here, that's going to be equal to 1. And you're going to notice it's basically going to have this part over here to satisfy this inequality. The middle section of this inequality needs to be equal to 1. And therefore, this is why the limit as x approaches 0, sine of x divided by x is equal to 1. If you all enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you all later.